Okay, so what is architecture? Good question. No, um, architecture, is for, I think it's for many people it means something uh, slightly different, but I think in general it's also about, always about space and people. And uh, the difference with, uh, with like sculpture is that it is a sort of a functional uh, element inside it. And, uh, then, uh, you could, uh, then there is an architectural moment, I think. The scale can be very, can range from large to big, doesn't really matter. Uh, but I think for me that would be defining it a little bit in a very general way, obviously. But that's the question also, like, so the, the general question, general answer. Mm. Um, yeah, I always try to tell, uh, especially students of architecture, that uh, actually you, when you think about what is architecture, is that you have to think uh, in space. And, uh, but the answer to what is a good architecture is not something you can put in words, but only in uh, rooms volumes, voids. Um, so the answer is um, is a building or a space. Yeah, I once had a nice discussion with somebody about what is it, when it, something is architecture and mm -hmm. when it's not. And yeah. um, when it's a, is a, every building architecture or not? And then it was like, okay, is every clothes, is every dress you wear fashion? Right? So that's more or less a similar I issue. So. Yes and no, but there's a general tendency which you can describe as a, as a fashion thing, but then something is more f a fashion item or it's just a plain piece of, of clothing. And then I think there is a little bit similar topic how you can describe a building and architecture. Sometimes a building is a piece of architecture, sometimes it's just a building. And then it's about certain magic elements that makes it, make it architecture. And um, <laughs> do I agree? Yeah, it's it's one of the hardest uh, mm -hmm. thing. Yeah. I think um, uh, it's something you can experience mm -hmm. probably when you're in it. You realize it's specially made mm -hmm. for you or for something. Uh, it maybe has a cultural value. Yeah. Relates to context. Quality. Has a certain quality. Mm -hmm. And doesn't feel too random. Mm -hmm. And it can also and for be sometimes quite somebody, some, somebody can think it's architecture and somebody else not. It can be, it can vary yeah, it can <laughs> if you feel it feels like yeah. architecture yeah. or not. Um, okay, well that's good for the first one. Fine. Then maybe we're moving slowly towards the second one. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so what can architecture do? What can architecture do? Yeah, it's, it's sort of. Uh, uh, you, you would like to answer that it would life make life better, <laughs> but on the other hand, uh, that doesn't always make life better, but sometimes it makes people wonder and think and uh, aware of certain elements that they didn't think about before. Uh, so that this put people on a, on a slightly different position about, hey, this is something special or something interesting or something moving or something beautiful. Uh, it's a little extra. Instead of, it's just a space or I don't care or it doesn't do anything to me. That's, I think, also a very general thing, but uh, to, uh, yeah, so it has a little extra load to, um, um, to the experience the of the space. Yeah. So what, what are you saying? It's about the feeling it provokes in people. Well, they need a sort of a, uh, like an extra flavor that, that m makes it, lifts it up from the, let's say, the, the, the ordinary to the, to the special or less ordinary. Um, yes, I, th I think also that um, there are a lot of typical ways to make buildings mm -hmm. and to make cities, uh, but once they uh, become more specific, because there's a dialogue between the person who designs and the client, the place, the user, uh, something happens uh, and this um, structure building space, whatever, starts to work, to be like an extra actor in the, uh, in the, in the, in the functioning of, uh, of the building. So good architecture uh, gives indeed pleasure. Yeah, but it can also be irritation, I think. It can Sometimes also be it can irritate. Yeah. Um, 
So it is a, it kind of a, a, a provokes an, a certain emotion. It can be a good emotion, but also a slightly intimida- intimidating emotion. It can provoke actions that weren't even anticipated mm-hmm. by the people who were, for example, commissioning it. <laughs> True. Yeah. Um, it can tell. Uh, the, the, the commissioner something about him or herself, about the organization, mm-hmm. can express its unique qualities. Yeah, but that sounds very co- like a corporate, I think. It can be corporate, yeah. but it depends on the client. Mm-hmm. If the client is yeah. very mm-hmm. corporate, maybe the building think, becomes corporate. You think about the client. Yeah. yeah. You said that sometimes it provokes things that the client is not anticipating. Do you sometimes want to provoke this, or is it uh, incidental? Well, the client maybe thinks in functions and in uses, and with good architecture, you can also create all kind of things in between. So then, uh, yeah, as a sum of all the uh, activities taking place in the building, sometimes suddenly because they are positioned uh, um, in a certain way, uh, interactions can start to to happen. And because there's suddenly space or light or a room or material or an obstacle in the space uh, created by the architecture of the building, uh, things start to happen that were maybe not uh, anticipated, but uh, often, at least in our designs, we sort of intended to make them happen anyway. So it's kind of stuff that happens in between all kinds of pragmatic wishes and f- and, and functions of, of buildings uh, that yeah that I would like to call uh, architecture. Nice. So it's kind of beyond the rational. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So what is your architectural position? Well, sometimes we describe this word uh, by using the term uh, spatializer, which is a kind of transformation of the word visualizer. Of course, then as architects deal with space, as our, I have to, uh, yeah, should have the ability to, um, uh, to express things dealing with space. We visualize space, so we spatialize. And then every element we do is always dealing with a kind of space. It can be an urban space, it can be an interior space, it can be all kind of, well, you know, a city space or a street space, or all kind of issues dealing with the space. And we can visualize these spatial things in a sp- spatializing way. And, but not, not only the formal thing, but it can also be a conceptual thing. So that means you can have a, an element or a theme or concepts that you can translate into a spatial uh, expression. So, so often we make selections of what we give, what we shape and do not shape, what we materialize and let be, what becomes uh, a volume or encapsulated by something or covered. And what not? Right? So it's b- always about what you what you preci- make, make more precise and specify in in the building or in in a city, and what is actually left open. Um, and uh, I think a lot of it is also about the way how these things then are connected. So through either uh, juxtaposition uh, in a field or uh, or by giving it certain sequences and connections. Uh, also, these are elements that are designed. Sometimes there are basically grids and, and fields that are designed, so it's almost like a measure system, 2D or 3D. Uh, it could even be influenced maybe beforehand digitally by, uh, by the users that sort of look for positioning in the field. Uh, and sometimes we actively uh, design uh, Routings by okay. creating plates or, or, or shapes. And um, do you have as any special references? Maybe no, I think it's possible to make that, that we always try to make somehow a clear inter- uh, intervention. So a, to make it clear, you have to be a little bit uh, extreme sometimes to make the, the, uh, the, the, the what you want to express more clear. So sometimes it's about densification. Then it's try to go for the maximum possible or for the minimum possible or so to, to go really into sort of a, that was always the, uh, the that's the best sometimes the best solution and you can some uh, do this in a small project or a big project so 
like we expressed in the Frank Marx book, that you extremize, extremize a certain statement and then in a spatial condition. And maybe what we said before was actually more the design method almost. Yeah. And the position is then uh, looking at all the stuff on the table, let's say, all the, all, the, all the questions asked and not asked, including what we think about how and where we should build. And, and our position is it to find an optimum or a maximum mm. or a minimum. Yeah. Or let's say, yeah, an optimum is maybe the best word. Our But position is to always find the optimum yeah, possibility, that, that, that's a very possible uh, connection yeah. between the different elements. That the optimum solution is for okay. Yeah, but it has to do with a certain radicalism mm, yes. as, as well. No, you could, we have this, you, sometimes we, we, we show the slides of the, of the world. Eh? So you, you have a lot of people on the planet. It's getting more and more. So basically, we should be very, very efficient in terms of use of space. So let's try to uh, to make it in a yeah to use some sp spaces less and other spaces more, so that there really is condensed concentration, so that other space, other areas can be can be left open. And that's, but and that comes a bit from the, the if you have been flying over Holland, uh, you see a little bit this feeling where it comes from because we have a little bit of everything everywhere and. Um, So we sometimes we really feel uh, the need to kind of extremize this. And make, okay, let's really put things together so that we have emptiness. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that's we have been growing up, and you see it more and more happening. And so this influence us a big deal. So that means also in other places we try to approach the same methods, and it can be can be applied anywhere. So uh, be space efficient so that you can actually make something exciting, or spe or special that, that takes up less space. It's yeah. so, something you can do uh, on a tiny scale uh, in the house here in Rotterdam, on making it on the roof, or um, by combining functions on top of each other. Uh, and this was also, by the way, in the message of the Expo Pavilion, where we sort of put everything on top of each other to make an empty space yeah. around it. And so this Maxim is somehow uh, maximizes and optimizes yeah. of space. Uh, and and it can, uh, <laughs> yeah. And then also you can also say, or, or if that doesn't work, then you try to maybe make it as, as sparse as possible. So you go the, the other way around. So. Still simple, but it seems to be still an efficient strategy. We can we can keep on going for 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 the moment, and it still uh, makes sense to do so. Yeah. So in, in in recent years, I think it's also uh, I don't want to say we are like the less is, less is more, but it is uh, in a way always interesting to see how little you can do. Mm -hmm. yeah. For example, like uh, do we really have to like you're saying like in space? Do we really need to use up everything, yeah. or can we? Can we compactize? Uh, do we have to design everything ourselves, or can someone else, a user, uh, pick up where we uh, we just leave, leave them with a certain frame or context mm -hmm. on which people can uh, continue? I think there's also the idea that the, the design itself or the architecture, the piece of architecture that we make, is never finished. So it always has a kind of infinity mm -hmm. in itself. That it can either be expanded or used, the usage can, can change it. Okay. It's not like a closed, yeah. sh it shouldn't be something closed off that is can only be used in one uh, way. single way. Yeah. I think uh, that's also very important in our, uh, mm -hmm. in our work, that it's never finished also. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. And do you want to say something else about uh, your design method? Design method, yeah, that's a secret. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think, I think there, there's there, hardly there, any office that did that, that, that communicates so much about. No, I think we have <laughs> always. Um, uh, I think we, yeah, I think we have been raised in a certain way in, in school here, university in Delft, and in the in the practice in Holland. So we have been learning a kind of a, like a research way of yeah research like approach in the design. So a lot of testing and, and trying out and then on the other hand trying to build up uh, a logic argumentation and, uh, and, and that, that you, you almost explain in, in a few so simple sketches the idea and uh, once, once that's clear then, then, then the project is should run almost automatically follow it, following this logic. Yeah. So, so pretty much everything that is related to the project can be a topic of investigation mm -hmm. and then we start to look at how it can result in a certain space or movement or yeah. yeah. 
So in the way that this was all oh, this mean of course always an in, in element that of, was interesting for us to use of the diagram. Uh, but we recently made a book about our projects and then we said to ourselves no diagrams. So we only had the buildings and the drawings and the space, the pictures and the, the experiences of the users. And it was an interesting uh, experiment. So indeed it can be experienced without knowing. Yeah, you know, people on the street haven't seen the diagram. They just see the building. So then it should be an able to understand. Yeah, you have it on many layers. You could know it, know the story behind it, or you can just see it without knowing anything. It should also be good. Yeah. It's also an interesting period in time now in in uh, the way we present designs and architecture because when we started to work uh, 3D modeling or uh, at all making a model or, or perspectives or, or or very beautiful drawings was something very elaborate and time-consuming that you could not always do during the process all the time. So you had to explain the project to your clients also, or users all the time with the help of diagrams and abstractions. And nowadays, uh, a lot of people are used that, you know, from day one, they have like a images that look like as if the building is already being made. So, uh, Everything has become very transparent, yeah, but also a bit boring and, yeah. and, predict and predictable. Uh, so I guess we're now at the point where we have to uh, think that's also where our interest comes in, uh, in, in, uh, in designing things that can change or in, in presentations that are interactive. That we can see uh, yeah, that our ideas are not static and it can still be influenced by 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 clients or by the, by the design process, uh, it's not like you start with a fixed idea and the only thing you have to do is to get it built. But um, yeah, how can we still uh, develop ways to discuss projects, to get input from clients, to uh, leave certain things open until until a last uh, moment? But this is this is a. Um, an interesting and fascinating uh, moment mm -hmm. because there's not much time also usually given. Eh? There's, there's only few to few, make a build, few buildings that can be oh, made. Oh, that, uh, there's not much time to design a building usually. Yeah, there's not much time and, and, to and design a building. Have, yeah. And it takes a long time to make a building. And it's, yeah. <laughs> it's also <laughs> kind of strange indeed. You have yeah. always little time to make to do yeah. a we, project. We it should be done in a few weeks and then in the end it takes years to make it. So that's yeah. kind of in the Netherlands, once you have made a design, it's almost forbidden to change anything during construction. I mean, everybody hates that. The prices are fixed, contracts are made. Yes. Uh, what you did is what you did. There are other cultures and countries where actually during the construction things yeah, can doing be uh, in, added in, in and India, changed. They, they, I mean, noticed now doing a project in India, they don't even look at the drawings. <laughs> they, 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 they're, they're just <laughs> buildings. Like, yeah, yeah. Well, and then we say, hey, but uh, the, 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 it's like this. And they say, the drawing? Oh. Is there a drawing? Then we realized they don't look at the drawing. So we started to make booklets with the pictures we, on, we put on the inside <laughs> and montage the, 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 the changes inside the picture. So it's like an analphabetic architecture. Yeah. It's like, yeah, it, it was really funny. <laughs> <laughs> I think, yeah, but so for our design method, actually the, the interaction with uh, the whole process itself is also an important. Uh, a tool. So seldom we don't even know how. Uh, at, at the beginning, we we absolutely uh, do not have very much preconceived uh, ideas. Let's say we usually know more about what we don't want to do than what we actually want to do, and then we start to look for specificities uh, in the question. Design and, uh, method, design method. Yeah, we are the generation 1.0, as we call them, of course, also. Because it's a computer, we were educated without computer, yeah, and then uh, when, we, uh, when we finished school, the computer started to appear.